Good evening, everyone. This is Jackie Williams, and tonight I want to look at the new Butterfly Brilliance Bundle, which is something that's an early release in the upcoming annual catalog that will be here in May. So let's go over to the desk and we'll take a look at this collection. Okay, so first of all, we have a stamp set, as you can see, and this is uh, all one stamp, which I'll show you in just a minute. And then we have the beautiful dies that go with it. So we have these detailed dies that are the same size as the stamps. And then we also have, um, let me just pull it off, the outline dies, which do fit right around, uh, actually you can't, um, these are not exactly to size, but they do fit right around these images. And then we also have just some smaller butterflies that coordinate with that, as well as some little background, uh, sorry, some background dies, which I'll show you some samples using these um, at the end of the Facebook Live. Uh, let me just show you though these stamps here. Uh, you've got the dies, oops, it goes that way though, and they fit right around these stamped images. So you can stamp it once, and then cut it out and you get six butterflies just all at once. Now I am personally considering buying a second set of the stamps and actually scissoring them apart so I've got some individual butterflies which I can still use with the die. That's up to you. I feel like this stamp set is relatively inexpensive and I think that I would be happy to have a second set so I can have individual butterflies as well. Let me set those aside. Oh, I've got a nice bright sunshine. It is a hot day here in New Zealand. And then also in this bundle, it's actually like a wood print. And I don't know, you probably can't tell in the video, but it's got like a shine to it and just a little bit of texture. So it is like a little piece of shiny wood. And then with this bundle, all of these items can be obviously bought individually, but you can also get it all in a bundle at a, at a bundle price. And we've got these beautiful papers that come with that. Okay, so these papers, uh, they've got a beautiful butterfly print on one side, and then we have uh, on the other side more of a solid print. Now let me show you a few neat things about these papers. You've got these little butterflies that are, uh, would be easy to scissor cut out or use these, let me grab them again, these very small dies with, or, and the larger print here, not only does it fit the stamps, but it also fits this little print on the paper as well. Hopefully you can see that. So you can just run it through once and get a little stack of butterflies. Okay, so that's the bundle. Now I just also, before I put that away, want to say that these two parts of the bundle, the stamps, oops, sorry, I'm being silly, the stamps and the dies will be available in the next annual catalog. So you will see these for quite some time. Um, however, let me move those out of the way. The papers and the wood paper are only available during, let's see, it's March and April until the next catalog comes out, the first part of May. So these two items will, are exclusive, limited time. The butterfly stamps and dies we're gonna keep on using for at least another year. So hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. This, I'm using some vellum, and I'm gonna use those, the whole collection of butterflies that comes in this set. So let me show you how to make those. First, what you would do is just stamp that entire stamp on vellum with Versamark, and then you're going to cover it with white embossing powder and go ahead and heat set, heat set it. So you're gonna basically white emboss on vellum. Now you do need to be a little bit careful with the vellum because it does have a waxy finish that will melt. So uh, you just wanna heat it till it, 
until the powder sets. You don't want to go any longer than that um, so you don't affect the vellum. You can see it's already going to be just a little bit crinkly as is, so you don't want to make that any worse than it's going to be. Now we're going to go back to an old technique that, uh, well obviously has been around for a long time, but it's a good one. So what we're going to do to color these is we're going to actually turn it over to the back, to the wrong side, and I'm going to grab my Stampin' Blends. Now back in the old days, and I say the old days, meaning like eight or ten years ago, we didn't have these and we needed, we just colored these with um, chalk or with our Stampin' Write markers, which are water-based markers, and they took a long time to dry. Now these will dry relatively quickly. And I'm using the darks of Flirty Flamingo, Pumpkin Pie, Mango Melody, Granny Apple Green, Bermuda Bay, and Highland Heather. Now even though we're using the dark of all of these, it's still going to come out very pale on the front. So let me grab the Flirty Flamingo. I'm not going to color all these with you right now, but I'll just show you how it works. And you're just going to scribble on the back and you don't need to worry about being precise because you won't see anything on the front except in between where the white embossing powder is. Okay. So if I turn that over, can't really see that with that horrible shadow, but there we go, something like that. You see that it's, it's very pale, even though I'm using the dark. And you can let that dry for a minute and go, and you can even add another layer of color to make it even darker. Or here's where you can even start mixing your colors if you want to be really creative. And then you would take this over to your die cutting machine, and you would cut all of them out once they've been colored. And you'll end up with, let me just pull them over, with a little pile of pretty butterflies all soft and vellum, and I've done them in rainbow colors, but of course you can do them in any colors that you like. And then I've got a piece of Whisper White. Uh, now I failed to write it down, so let me remember. Um, I want to say your black is four and three quarter inches square, and so your white is just smaller, which would be four and five eighths inches square. And I have embossed that with the brick embossing folder or you can pick any folder that you like. And now I'm just gonna arrange my butterflies however I want. Um, I'm gonna do them in kind of a rainbow order. And you could use a glue dot. I'm just gonna use a little bit of Tombow. And then we'll put our purple one down here like this. Now it's okay that we're just seeing partials of some of these because we're going to cover it with, with um, some different elements on here. And you could arrange it in more of a cascading fashion. You could even arrange it in just a line. But when I did that, I realized my card was actually going to end up being like nine inches um, long. So I decided to do a square. And my card face here is five by five inches or five by ten folded in half. And then for my sentiment, I grabbed, let me find it here, this goodie, this one. It's actually a similar concept to the butterfly one where it's a big stamp with lots of elements on it and then one die that cuts everything out. It's called Many Messages. So let's see, I've got it upside down. You'll see that you stamp it and then you just Sorry, it goes like that. And then you just run that through and you get all of those sentiments all in one go. So you use the one that you want to use for whatever you're working on and then you've got a little stash of them. Sorry, I'll have to move out of the shadows here. You've got a little stash of them for, you know, another day. So I thought with this one, I'll use the thinking of you with sympathy and prayers because um, it's always good to have a sympathy card in your stash. And I will use the black dimensionals for this. And you can place that wherever you want. You know, if you had like a smaller one that you wanted to use, you could decide where you wanted it to go. Then, let's see, let's do our ribbon, which this is fun. So we're going to grab our blends again. And I need a piece of grid paper. And we're going to use, you know, my most used ribbon, the Whisper White Seam Binding. But I'll show you this one. Hopefully you can see it. We're not going to color it just one color. We're going to color it multiple colors so that you get this kind of uh, 
graffiti sort of look. I just feel this this desire every time I use this brick background to, to create kind of a graffiti look. Um, but this time I think I'm going to use the purples and the blues, whereas on the first sample I used the yellows and the pinks. So the dark Bermuda Bay is actually quite dark, so I grabbed the light Bermuda Bay just to do the ribbon. And I'm going to grab my Dark Highland Heather and I'll just start putting it on. But you'll see that I'm putting it on really patchy, so I'm leaving some white there. And then go back with my Bermuda Bay and fill in the white bits and kind of go over that purple bit as well. So you're getting some purple or some Highland Heather, some Bermuda Bay, and then a lot of areas where the colors are actually mixed. And the longer you let it sit there, the more the colors do start to blend and you'll get, hopefully you can see that, you'll get this beautiful blended color. Now to do our ribbon, I really wanted a double bow. So I'm going to do the same little technique that I did, I don't know if it was last week or the week before with the twine, where I'm just going to loop it around my fingers and then I'm just going to fold that loop in half and then use this piece to tie it through the middle. This might be a little big, but I'm okay with that. I like lots of ribbon. And then you're just going to tie that and pull it tight. Okay. And then you get kind of a, a pseudo bow. Yeah, that's a little bit big, but I think we'll get it to look nice. Let me find my glue dots. And we'll go ahead and glue dot that down onto our project, like so, and I'll need to cut those tails off. Okay, now I've got the, oh, and I've even already tied it. That wasn't on purpose. That was a happy coincidence. This is from the Playful Pets, this little black and white twine. It's quite useful, especially when you're doing something like this. I find when I'm doing a rainbow sort of card or a card with lots of colors, the black and white is often a great, uh, ac you know, base colors because then the colors just really pop. Okay, then we want to put some embellishments on there, of course, and I've gone for my Artistry Blooms sequins. I really like these. You've got the pool party, kind of an orangey color, more of a yellow color, and then there's a pink one but I have actually happened to use all of the pink ones. But the nice thing about these sequins is there's actually many colors in them, so they match with quite a few things. Except probably the blue ones are, are more kind of one-toned, but the other ones ha definitely have different colors in them. So I'm just going to put a few large of the blue sequins in for the pool party. Um, yep, I think that's about it. And then I'm going to mix in some of the pearls, some of the basic pearls, and put that in like so. And there, there we go. So you've got this beautiful pink, well, actually all the colors of the rainbow. And then inside I've just done a multicolored to match the ribbon sympathy verse. And so you can compare that to the first one I did where I actually, the butterflies are actually the same color but I just brought out different colors with the ribbon and then did, you know, a different color on the inside. All right, now some other samples that I've made with this project. So this is one that I made this afternoon using the Rich Razzleberry and some of that uh, wood paper. And I actually embossed it with the uh, Pinewood Planks folder so it's even got even more texture to it. And it's just a simple card with one butterfly and some vellum underneath. I'll put these here. And then this one here is actually the same card, just done in different colors. And I've used the terracotta tile linen ribbon and just used the edges of that. I was trying to go for a monarch look here. I think I need a little bit stronger yellow underneath there, but I do think it still looks nice. Um, and then just did some of the butterfly stamps on the inside. Now the, these samples are ones that I did not make and she actually donated these to the uh, Auckland Burn Unit. We did a service project at our camp recently 
and I haven't yet met up with the person who's taking them to the burn unit, so I was a little bit cheeky and pulled them out so that I could show you these beautiful ones. So they're just simple, but just so nice, and it's really nice for making a little collection of cards. And you can see that she's used very effectively the butterfly print and the butterflies that I showed you cut out so nicely with the, that large die. These showcase very nicely, let's move those, the, the extra little dies that come in that set. So this is the little dotty one. Hopefully you can see that. It actually creates little holes. And this is one that uh, I don't know what you kind of a basket weave one and it doesn't actually create holes But it just creates a texture on the back so you can kind of see it maybe a little better on the inside and And then the last one is the brick die which it looks like It's been printed there, but actually the die has made brick holes and there's paper Underneath that is showing through and that one is also very effective. So Thank you Delise and then these cards will be going to the Auckland burn unit shortly. I uh, have put the link where you can see the Butterfly Brilliance Bundle online if you would like to check out those products uh, a little more closely. And thanks for joining me and I'll see you next week, Thursday at 7. Bye-bye.